This is the Camrui GK3 Plus. It has an Intel N95 processor with 16 gigs of RAM and a 512 gig NVMe M.2 boot drive. Now this device was sent over to me by Camrui to take a look at and share with you guys, but they've had no say in any of the content for this video. They won't see it before you do and no money has changed hands. I just wanna be completely transparent about that. Now the Intel N95 isn't a powerhouse of a processor with its four cores and four threads. It has a max boost clock of 3.4 gigahertz and it's on par with the i5 7300hq when we take a look at cpu mark and single thread ratings from cpubenchmark.com and yes the i5 7300hq is six years old but the new n95 has a max tdp of 15 watts instead of 45 watts while achieving a very similar boost clock oh and the base frequency of the n95 is only 100 megahertz so when it's just sitting there idling, it's literally just sipping power from the wall. Now, as I mentioned, this unit comes with 16 gigs of RAM, which is the max that the N95 processor can support. Also, the GK3 Plus only has one RAM slot, so your RAM will be running in single channel mode. Now, if we pop the top off, we can see that there is a spot where we can put a two and a half inch drive for additional storage if we want to slide a drive in there. And if we remove the three screws holding in that drive tray, we'll see that that's where the RAM is right below there. And if we remove the screws holding in the motherboard, we'll be able to pop out the board and see the M.2 drive on the bottom. Now that's really all there is regarding serviceability of the device. So let's talk about the IO for just a minute. On the front, there's just a simple light to indicate if the device is on or in sleep mode. On the left, there's a power button, a USB 2.0 port and two USB 3.0 ports. On the right side, for some reason, there's a VGA port. And I guess maybe some people are still using those. Lastly, on the back is where we're going to see most of our IO. We've got a Kensington lock, a headphone microphone combo jack, a one gig LAN port, two HDMI ports and another USB 2 port and a barrel jack for power. So while I understand that they were trying to go for kind of a clean aesthetic on the front of the device, I would have really liked to have seen a USB 3A port, a headphone jack, and maybe even a USB-C port there on the front just for a bit more usability. And honestly, for that matter, a USB-C port anywhere on the device would have been nice. I mean, come on, they put a VGA port on a new in 2023 device why wouldn't they put a USB-C port here? Now there's plenty of ventilation around the top and bottom of the device with a single 40 millimeter fan on the bottom to help keep the processor cool. The GK3 Plus also has Wi-Fi and Bluetooth, but they are Wi-Fi 5 and Bluetooth 4.2, so they are just a bit out of date. So when I fired this up for the first time, I did have to go through the full setup of Windows 11 Pro, which was a nice change after the last mini PC I reviewed. Um, so if you don't remember that, like when I first booted up, there was already a user account created and, and it just signed me in. That was not the case here. I actually had to go through and accept the terms and set up my account. So they actually handled this correctly and I really do appreciate that. Once I had everything set up, I was able to get online, run OS updates and browse the internet with no issues. Watching videos online was a breeze, but I did run into a bit of an issue with codecs when trying to play some local media. Uh, this should be an easy enough fix for some people, but it may not be for others and that's why I wanted to bring it up. So if you're looking for an inexpensive way to get online, browse the internet, pay bills, and do some light gaming, the GK3 Plus is a great deal for just a couple of hundred bucks over on Amazon at the time of recording. Now, with all of that said, if you're interested in a low powered mini PC as a home lab server, this is a much better deal than you may find on the Raspberry Pi market, though I know that is shifting just a little bit right now. Even with Pi prices coming down, the GK3 Plus packs a ton more horsepower with the same 15 watt power draw from the wall. And with the GK3 Plus, you could easily set up a Docker or Proxmox server. You could easily put Plex on here and have a very decent media server because that N95 does have Intel Quick Sync video support for easy uh, transcoding of media files. So if you're interested in picking one of these up, I will have an affiliate link in the video description that will take you over to Amazon to pick one of these up. So I'd love to know from you guys what your thoughts are on this device, if it's something you would use uh, yourself as a desktop PC, or maybe you've got an older relative who needs an inexpensive desktop computer, 
or uh, if this is something that you might consider picking up for the sake of having a very low power but very capable home lab server or test bench or whatever the case is. So let me know in the comment section down below what your use case for something like this might be. Again, links to everything in the description down below. Uh, but with that said, I wanna thank you guys for spending a few minutes of your day with me today and I will talk to you in the next video.